continuation of the introduction. Number 5. The Trinitarian Trilogy as the Pope's New Theology and the Problem of its Interpretation. John Paul II considers the realization of Vatican II in the life of the Church as the main task of his pontificate. In this, quote, new phase of the self-realization of the Church, in keeping with the epoch in which it has been our destiny to live, end quote, Dives in Misericordia 15.3, and because of the importance of the office of Peter, the Trinitarian Trilogy takes on a crucial role as the Pope's personal theology. However, there lies a considerable problem. As we can show by a short sketch and summary of the Pope's theology. The Trinitarian Trilogy is a genuine fruit from the tree of the knowledge of Vatican II. It belongs to the genus of new theology. The Council's decision to discard traditional, quote, scholastic terminology in favor of a, quote, pastoral council language was apparently rather harmless at first sight, but has visibly taken its toll. This discarding of traditional terminology has meant the disappearance of the Philosophia Perennis and the silent rupture with the Catholic system of classical theology, John Henry Newman, and with the conceptual expression of church dogmas. But the break with tradition was the first step necessary for the Council's theological innovations, which marked the official birth of a pluralism of new theologies, which from then on would be legitimate. Thus, we are looking at an absolute novelty in the history of the Church's teaching. A special version of the new theology has assumed its place on the chair of Peter, and characterizes the teaching and pontificate of John Paul II. The very idea of the new theology means rejecting the Catholic system of the outdated theology, while retaining its own novelties which have a particular individual structure and framework. It is, per se, pluralistic, because of the wide variety of modern philosophies and ways of thinking. It attempts to redefine the Christian faith in the mental framework of modern thinking. All this implies two things for the accurate interpretation of the new theology. Number one, the basic requirement for an adequate understanding of the truth is the intellectual renunciation of the Catholic system. Since this new thinking does not spring from the Catholic system, it cannot be understood by means of that system either. Number two. Since each version of the new theology has its special philosophical and theological principles, its particular emphasis, its own individual terminology and language, it must also be understood and interpreted based on the underlying principle of the respective author. Traditional notions which have their fixed place and clear meaning in the Catholic system, suddenly take on another meaning in the context of a new theology. Yet, there is an additional factor. Karl Wojtyla was not only a scientist, philosopher, and theologian, but also a writer and poet, which he remained even as Pope. Thus, while reading the texts formulated by the Pope, we must take careful notice of his literary devices and expressive poetic language. Such, then, is the problem of interpreting papal documents by means of the personal theology and language of the author. Obviously, the substance of the Catholic faith remains intact only if the content of the dogmatic notions as defined by the Church is also kept intact in the respective version of the new theology. John Paul II's intention is to convey the message of Vatican II not only to the Church, but to all mankind. 
This was also the intention of Vatican II, Lumen Gentium 1.1. To achieve this end effectively, the Pope summarizes the pastoral and theological content of the Council documents in the Trinitarian Trilogy. He formulates, in his version of the New Theology, the new insights of the conciliar message which will mark the Church's future course of action. He traces the essential program in his inaugural encyclical right at the beginning of his pontificate. That means the theological message of Vatican II is substantially identical with the Pope's new theology expressed in the encyclicals. For John Paul II, Vatican II is quite simply the voice of the Holy Ghost. By ascribing to the self-styled pastoral council the highest conceivable teaching authority, which he directly links up to that of his apostolic office, the Pope accordingly raises his new theology, which sets forth the doctrine of the council, to an absolute status. The post-conciliar era is marked by the controversy over the spirit of the council and the correct understanding of the council. Amidst this clash of opinions, the Trinitarian Trilogy is, in a sense, the official interpretation of what the council really taught, desired, and of what it understood by the, quote, accomodata renovatio ecclesiae. That means... The Trinitarian Trilogy is an authentic interpretation of the Second Vatican Council by the Pope. It should put a stop to the theological dispute over the spirit of the Council and the correct understanding of the Council. With the authority of the Holy Ghost, the Council, and the Office of Peter, the Pope indicates the general orientation for theological thought and for the life of the Church into the third millennium, and this orientation leads to Assisi. In our day, the fruits of the post-conciliar pluralism of numerous new theologies are plain for all to see. The abandonment of the Catholic system and the unleashing of countless, even enculturated, new theologies have led to a breakdown in the unity of the Catholic faith handed down for centuries. In the era of pan-ecumenism and interfaith dialogue, the traditional ideas of heresy and paganism were simply eliminated from Catholic vocabulary. The clear identity of the Catholic faith disappeared in the haze of a theological, ecumenical, multicultural, and interfaith pluralism. Rome and the Episcopal Conferences are concerned about spreading the faith. The survival of the Church is in question. But how can the faith be handed down and remain stable unless the faith be clearly defined? Now, if the Pope himself presents the substance of the last ecumenical council in his version of the new theology, and if in his encyclicals he proposes to plot the course for the, quote, church of the future at the threshold of the third millennium, while at the same time claiming to uphold the entire deposit of faith, then the problem of theological pluralism and the transmission of the faith suddenly appears in a new light. The authors of the New Theology were fully convinced that the traditional Catholic system, by reason of its association with an antiquated metaphysics, with a static frame of mind, and with an entirely outdated view of the world and of history, was totally out of touch with reality, and hence was incapable of getting through to twentieth-century man. The full-scale reduction of all facets of reality to mere history in modern thought requires similar modifications for theology. The rise of the new theology represents an unprecedented radical change. Each major version of the new theology comes across as a philosophical-theological new invention, 
which, however, purports to maintain the entire Christian faith in the setting of modern thought. It fully replaces the traditional Catholic system. The scope of such an enterprise is reminiscent of St. Thomas Aquinas, and would surely require the academic prowess of the angel of the schools in order to succeed. The Trinitarian Trilogy, Redemptor Ominis 1979, Dives in Misericordia 1980, and Dominum et Vivificantem 1986, can be considered as the core of a lively presentation of the Pope's new theology, which is based on Vatican II, and which gives a new explanation of our entire Christian faith for the Church and for all mankind at the threshold of the third millennium, thereby displacing the Catholic system of the pre-conciliar Church. As we have just shown, the task of interpreting the encyclicals is by no means easy. Therefore, we will first give the reader a condensed summary of the author's theological principles, 6 and 7, which will serve as the key to an adequate understanding of his thought. <laughs>